Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 4.15, and in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the audio mod device. Now, I normally start these videos by trying to put stuff into some kind of context and say, okay, we've seen this here, 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 and here, or, you know, this is where it came from in history. For the audio mod, I really can't think of anything to compare this to. It honestly is something very unique and original, at least to my eyes. Now, Granted, I don't work with that many digital audio workstations and I'm not super up on all the new technology. My guess is somebody has made a device like this and it's available as a third party plugin or somebody's made something in Max for Live or somebody's designed something in Super Collider. I don't know, but what we're gonna talk about here is something that's pretty unique to me and I find it to be really cool. And I think over time, this is gonna become a sound designer's ultimate dream go-to modulator. So let's just load it up because I really can't say anything else about it. So here's what we have going right now, just a pad and a kick drum. Okay, pretty lame, but let's say we wanna go for that side chain pumping compressor kind of feel. Now we know that if I go in here and drop a compressor, I don't have a side chain capability. Right, I can use the compressor, but I can't really route any audio. I can't get that side chain effect. I can do it with the dynamics effect, but you know, maybe I just don't feel like dialing all this in. It just seems way too confusing for me at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab the audio mod. And what the audio mod is gonna allow me to do is actually route my source out. It's gonna be listening for something else, okay? It's hard to explain this unless I just load it up real quick. So I'm gonna, for my source, select the kick pre-fader. Okay, I'll just turn it down for right now. And I just want you to watch this meter. Okay, we can see how this is greatly contrasting to our meter out here on the right. So the source is coming from the kick pre-fader. Okay, so where this gets interesting is that it's actually analyzing this, okay? So it's taking this into account and it is going to then potentially modulate another effect based on this amplitude envelope. And we can see the kick, you know, it's pretty aggressive, boom, 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 boom. So let's say I wanna go for that kind of pumping cascade style compression. Well, I could put a compressor in here, but what we know from using modulation, from using the mod, uh, in these other devices, we actually need to select a parameter. And I really don't know what parameter I could use to get that effect. You know, I can't have it just select like a dry wet and just come in and out. So I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. And here is where everybody's jaw drops. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select the tool device. And what is a sidechain compressor? A sidechain compressor is basically just a volume automator. It just turns something down when the source signal exceeds the threshold. Well, if we know that, we should be able to dial this up so that we are going to take this source and have that hit this amplitude and have it turned down. So I'm gonna select the modulator and I'm gonna pull my amplitude right down. And now let's play this back and hear what happens. Now I can actually add back in some kick. So just like that, we're getting a little bit of gentle side chain compression. Really, really cool. I can take this a step further and I can adjust kind of how far this is gonna go. If I turn the curve up, it's gonna slam it a little bit further. And if I put it back down, it's gonna work the opposite way. Depth will control how far we're going. So if I really go absolutely crazy with my modulation amount, like, you know, I pulled it all the way around, then instead of having to go back in and adjust that, I could just choose the depth to get it where I want it. And that seems to work pretty well for me. 
And we also have an envelope follower, which we can turn on and off. And this further is going to allow us to sculpt exactly how this modulation is happening. So we know that if I put a really low release time, we'll get something more bouncy. If I you know, raise it up, it's gonna sustain a little bit longer. So let's mess around with that, why not? So that's way too fast, just like when you work with a normal compressor. So just like that, we've created a sidechain compressor using just a tool device and this audio mod effect. We could do something similar using the step sequencer, but this is more intuitive and it gives us more control. And really this actually is giving us more control than a traditional sidechain compressor because we have a depth control. We can even mix this in with dry wet if we want. to either lessen the effect or go full blown, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now the thing that's really unique about this is we can basically side chain anything. Anything that we can hit with a mod device, we can side chain. So I'll show you that in a second, but I also want to point out this pre-filter. So what the pre-filter is going to do, it's not actually gonna filter anything out, but it is going to take a listen and analyze the source. So if we only want it to be listening to the very lowest of low end material in here, so for example, we only want the side chain to be occurring if let's say this kick drum sustained for a long time and the pitch went up, we only wanted it to be working on something that's like under 90 Hertz, we could do that. So if I turn this all the way down to nothing, we're not gonna have any effect happening. But as I pull this back up and the kick drum comes back in, Right, so I hope that's self-explanatory for you. It's actually not filtering out any of our audio in this main track here. It's only trying to take into account the kick drum, and so it's making this kind of pseudo filter on that. So the last thing I just wanna show you with this that's really cool is that we can take this a step further. So now when we actually are side chaining this kick drum to the pad, I could also maybe introduce a little bit of, I don't know, Let's do distortion, something we can hear. So I'll turn the mix down to nothing on this. And now with the modulator, I'll have it pull the mix up. We'll see if we can get this really sounding for you. And again, we could push this as far as we wanted into whole other domains, into a completely different universe. And again, we could start with an audio mod and we could route that into a step sequencer, which we could then route into an LFO. So this is where the program really kind of stands on its own and can do some stuff that you just can't do anywhere else. Um, I really can't think of another way without drawing in automation manually that we could get this kind of effect. And so that's um, why the audio mod for being so small and so seemingly, uh, I don't know, weak is actually one of the most powerful 
tools or devices you have in this entire piece of software. So definitely take this one, experiment to your heart's content. Uh, again, your best results are going to come when you're using a source that has either something very punchy like a transient or a ton of different dynamics. So if you have something that's dynamically shifting all over the place, you'll notice that I'm not gonna get such like an even and consistent curve like I'm getting here with my amplitude shutting on and off, but it will actually vary over time. And so that's pretty cool if you want to uh, mess around with that. You can even make a total ghost track that just has a bunch of shifts in automation in dynamics using just the gain control and see what you can come up with. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and you will hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.